Returning to Mom's Basement MMA once again is one of the top featherweight contenders in the country. He is from Texas, and he will be headlining Fury 89. His name's Michael Aswell. Michael, welcome back to the program, sir. Glad that we could link up. I know we're in camp. April 21st is right around the corner. I'm sure you're really excited to put on a show for your people. Oh, man, I'm, I'm ecstatic. Dude, I cannot wait. I'm ready to go. I wish it was this weekend, but <laughs> we have to wait one more week. Fair enough. The last time I talked to you, you had a pretty gnarly uh, cut on your face, and yeah. you look a lot prettier this go around. You look like you're ready to uh, uh, so perform. Better. Yeah, you look good, man. You look Let's good. Look, yeah. I wanted to briefly hit on that Josh Altoom fight. He got really mad at me. I put something on Instagram, and he's like, it's a doctor stoppage, blah, blah, blah. And like he was like really clear with me, like, hey, that's a doctor stoppage, and then, right. you know, whatever. Um, but all that stuff being said, aside from his anger toward your boy, you go back, Fury FC 85, you go back, you watch that tape with a fresh pair of eyes. How happy were you with that performance, just all things considered? Dude, I, I say this all the time. I go back and watch that fight, and I've never – I haven't seen myself fight like that. You know, I'm very happy. I did everything that I wanted to do, um, everything me and my coaches, you know, we game planned for, everything we said we wanted to do, and we did it, you know, for the most part. Besides getting, you know, cut in the first round, I guess that's the only, the only thing I didn't like that much. But besides that, you know, we knew how, how the fight was going to play out, and – pretty much, you know, prepared to a T and we knew that's kind of how it was going to end. Didn't think it was going to end like that, but I mean, you know, get him to quit and that's essentially what happened. So, I mean, I'm, I think that was one of my, um, one of my favorite performances besides probably the Cameron Graves fight, but that one, you know, I loved watching that fight back. All things considered, Michael, a relatively short turnaround, January, of 2024 was when you fought Altum, and then here we are, not even May, and you'll be headlining yet again. And I was mm -hmm. curious, like, did the cut, did that, like, compromise anything with camp? Like, did you have to wait to get cleared before you could uh, resume contact or whatever? I was just curious if you had to yeah. kind of, like, stand around the cut at all. A little bit. I mean, it, they they said, like, 14 days after it stitched up, you know, before I could pull out the stitches, right? So. I had to wait like 14 days. I was still, they're still like, you can, you know, strength and conditioning and run around. So as soon as they told me that, I still got back to work, you know, you know, a lot of weights and I got a new strength and conditioning coach. Um, so I've been working a lot on my strength and my explosiveness, um, you know, still running, you know, but contact wise, it did take a little while. Maybe I'd say about maybe like 20 to 25 days after the fight where it's like, all right, let me see how it feels. Let me make sure, you know, because it was still a little sensitive. You know, once we got past that point where it's like, oh, it gets hit, it's all right. It was pretty much a full go. We're good to go, you know. Michael, you have been competing in this promotion, going back to your amateur days for going on six years. So you're a guy that came through as an amateur, and you've been, like, building yourself up and climbing through the ranks, and now here we are. You're going to be headlining another Fury FC card. I know you've done that a few different times now, but, like, for a young guy that's, like, coming into this promotion, can you explain a little bit, like, what's your experience been like with these guys, and how do you build yourself up in this promotion the right way, in your opinion? Right. Um, Fury's been great to me. Uh, me and Eric have such a good relationship, and – um, you know, since I was an amateur, we've had a good relationship and we've even just talked about, you know, things we wanted to do. I, you know, tell him what I want to do. And, you know, me, I'm always like, I want to fight for the belt. You know, even as I was an amateur, I was like, I want the amateur belt already. And, you know, he was just telling me that, you know, this is how things go. And if you do this and, you know, do everything the right way, then, you know, you're going to get what you want. And um, just building myself up is really just, you know, I'm just thankful for all my people and all the support I have. Um, they always come out and they spread the word and, you know, word spreads and, you know, a lot of tickets are sold and, you know, it's kind of just how, you know, the brand gets built, you know, just being a good person, just, you know, I'm, I'm just thankful really, honestly, all my people, you know, they, they really don't have to come out and support and they always do, you know, and um, I think it just tells of just, you know, who you are and how you treat people. And, you know, I think they come back and they, treat you the same way tenfold you know one of the things that i like so much about fury is for the main events we're talking about potential 25 minute fights it's not always like that in other regional promotions and now here you are back to back headline fights back to back main events back to back 25 minute uh 
a 25 minute fight that you're potentially having to plan for. Does it get easier the more that uh, you're training for 25 minutes or are we just talking about any other fight? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, it's funny too, because in amateurs, I fought five rounds. I know it wasn't 25 minutes. It was still, uh, it was three, three minute rounds. Yeah. It's still like the experience of going five, you know, understanding that, Hey, there's still more to go. Um, I think is a big deal, but I mean, easier. I mean, the work still is the same. You know, we still are training as hard as possible. You know, even when I'm training for a 15 minute fight, it's still, you know, as if we're training for a championship fight. Right. So, I mean, you know, I feel like the higher you get the levels wise, it's more in the details, you know, really focusing on the little things more than, you know, hey, we got to train for, I know it's a big deal, right? You got to train for 25 minutes, but we're already getting ready to train for 25 minutes. We're getting ready to train for an hour. You know, we're getting ready to train for as long as we need to go, um, essentially. So it's really just, you know, sharpening up the tools, really, um, you know, getting the little details needed for the higher levels and then working on that. And then, you know, because at the end of the day, we're, we're working our ass off. And it's going to be, you know, we're working for a championship fight every time we train, you know. And I am sure that the ante is being upped even more considering your opponent, your opponent, Nate Richardson, 11 and four. This is a guy that's been on his uh, a tear as of late. He's won three out of his last four, including a win over Diego Lopez. That looks really good. Tell me about this Nate Richardson guy. Like, what is it that you see and what makes him a good fighter? How come nobody's beating this guy? Uh, I think he's just a tough guy. At the end of the day, you know, he a lot of the times he gets hit, he gets rocked, and he's just, you know, always gets back up and marches forward, you know. Like we talk about a lot with my style, it's it's hard to fight someone that has good pressure, that's constantly moving forward. Um, you know, he, he's very quick, he's fast, you know, and um, he's explosive. And it's tough. Those guys that move forward, very quick, very explosive, they kind of just – are in your face, you know, and it's tough. And he's a tough guy at the end of the day. You see, I mean, he's got experience. He's got 15 fights, 16, you know, so he's a tough dude. Do you feel, Michael, you look at his game, does he remind you of any of your prior opponents? And where do you think you have the biggest advantage over this guy? Yeah, I mean, it really reminds me of the last fight I just had. I think, um, you know, besides, you know, he likes to come forward a little more than the last fight. But I think there's a lot of similarities. Um, I think I'm just going to have to just stay moving. Just keep doing what I do. I got to just stick to what I do best and, you know, not worry too much about what he's doing and really just focus on really what I want to do and what I get done in there, you know? Well, let's talk about getting it done. Fury 89, you go in there and you take care of this guy. You become the Fury featherweight champion. I mean, that is a Mm -hmm. massive deal. You're already on the radar to a lot of people, but you get that title and all of a sudden you find yourself on the upper echelon of all of the featherweights in the country. What would winning the Fury FC featherweight title mean for you at this point in your career? It will mean a lot, man. I, um, you know, I set a lot of goals for myself and I have, um, and that's one of them that I've set a long time ago. Um, for me personally, it would feel great. I know, um, you know, in the in the scheme of things, a bigger scheme of things, I know that sets me up for definitely a contender shot, if not, you know, a short notice fight um, for the UFC or, I mean, bigger promotions. But, you know, I'm just, I think I would just feel fulfilled um, with where I'm at and just be happy and, you know. It's just another another goal that I'm ready to achieve that I've had set, you know, just another one to check off the list and then get ready to keep on checking off the rest, you know? Some guys, th- this whole idea of, like, fighting with the for the UFC on a short notice, like, they're not really with that. They're like, man, I want a full camp. I don't – I'm not really with that. I want to have the opportunity to go through a full camp and just get, like, a straight signing. But – those are becoming a little bit more rare and rare. And then there are other guys that look at contender series and they're just kind of like, I think that's kind of like the pathway I would want to go into the UFC. Do you have a preference one way or the other? For me, it doesn't really matter. I think with the short notice, it's more like a weight thing, I guess, you know? So like, if they're like, Oh, you have to make one forty five in a week. And I'm like, 
all right, I don't know if I'll do all that, you know, maybe two weeks or give me three or something. But, um, you know, if it's like a catch weight or something, I don't mind fighting short notice. I think I would excel in short notice. I think my cardio would hold up, you know, for 15 minutes. I think I, I'm really well, like I do well adjusting on the fly kind of and adapting to where I'm at and seeing, you know, the different styles. So, you know, having a new opponent, a quick opponent, I think, you know, that benefits me. But I also don't mind the contender series. I, I like, you know, it's like having a full camp. You get ready for a guy. And, you know, I, I've i been at the Apex. So I kind of, I, you know, I've been there before. I kind of am familiar with it, how it goes, how the whole week at the UFC is. So, you know, I get I get both sides. I, I, I don't mind either side. I just feel like, you know, with the short notice, you know, you're coming in already as the underdog. You almost have nothing to lose, right? So you go in there and you kind of just give it all and whatever happens kind of happens, you know, and then you get your deal. Well, Michael, I do believe one way or the other, we will see you in the UFC in relatively short order. And is there a fighter in the UFC in any way class that you look at and you're just kind of like, yeah, I would say I'm similar to this fighter right here. Are, 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 is there anyone out there that you see that we could like make that comparison to, or are you just a rare cat and there isn't anybody <laughs> like you in that promotion? Uh, you know, I get asked that a lot. Like, who would you compare yourself to? And, um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I kind of like almost back in the day was like a, like a Chad Mendez almost kind of, you know, with the pressure, but he wrestles a little more than I do, I think. And, um, I feel like I'm kind of like a combination of a couple of things that like, you know, even like, you know, Max, you can see Max just doesn't get tired and he's constantly throwing, but he throws maybe a little more combinations than I do, you know, but I think I can, I could find a bunch of fighters and, you know, that's kind of what I do. You know, I see a bunch of fighters and I see what they do and kind of pick things that I like and that I think I would do well with what they do and then kind of mix it together and make it my own, you know? So I wouldn't really say it. there's someone like, definitively that I can be like, oh yeah, this is, you know, I, I fight just like this guy, but I definitely take a lot of things from a lot of other fighters and try to make it my own. If that makes sense. Makes total sense. Fury FC 89 for a lot of people that are going to be tuning in. It's a headline fight, big uh, promotion, Fury FC. And for people outside of Texas, like it's exposure. They're going to be people from all over the world. that are going to tune in to watch this for people who have never seen you compete before. What are some of the things that they can expect to see when you fight on April 21st? Uh, they can expect to see me get down for sure. You know, I'm going to go forward, um, get throw a lot, a lot of punches. I'm going to be looking for the finish for sure. And um, you're going to see me just have a lot of fun in there. Really. I just, you know, I love what I do. And um, every time I get in there, I feel more and more comfortable every time I'm in there. So they're going to see someone that's just happy to be there, happy to, happy to do what they love, you know, and not many people can say that. So it's going to be a great show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, make sure wherever you are in the world, you are watching UFC fight pass. You are watching Fury FC 89. That happens on April 21st. It'll be a fantastic show before I let you go, Michael, UFC 300. I have to ask you a couple questions. Max so, Holloway yeah. versus Justin Gaethje. Who's winning that fight and who do we need to be putting our money on? Unfortunately, I think Gaethje wins. I just don't really see how Max wins. I think Gaethje's just going to eat up those legs, probably. Um, Max is just going to have to, like, touch and move, but it's hard to move away from Gaethje. I mean, he's just a freaking animal. And the main event, Poetan versus Jamal Hill, who do you like in that fight? God, I don't know. Jamal's coming off an injury. Poetan is scary. Just a freak specimen. Is it a coin flip to you? It's a, such a coin flip to me. I I want to say Alex, you know, the revenge thing. You know, he, he was in the corner for, you know, Teixeira. But I kind of like I don't know why. Like, I don't know. that Everyone, like, always shows, like, Hale, like, oh, it doesn't have footwork or whatever. But he's, like, a dog, I think. He just can't. I don't know. Like, he just can never count that dude out. I don't know. Uh, when I let you know, when I when I figure out what I know, then I'll I'll I'll, I'll DM you. I'll let you know. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Well, Michael, I appreciate your time, sir. I know there's a lot going on in camp. Who do we need to thank? Who are the sponsors you need to shout out before I let you go? Oh man, I got a bunch of sponsors. Um, 
Ace's performance for sure. It's my uh, my cousin, my uncle, um, Fencing Company. I just picked up a couple new sponsors. Uh, Lareda Taqueria, always uh, always in my corner. Um, I mean, not really a sponsor, but my mom and my dad, my girlfriend, you know, the people that always, um, I guess my girlfriend's really a big sponsor. You know, they're always taking care of me and um, taking care of us, you know. Um, I wish I had a whole list. Four ounce, my fight club, for sure. Um, my coach, my boxing coach, Danny, taking care of me. Um, I wish I had a list with all the sponsors I can name for you. Um, but everyone on my shorts, everyone that are going to be at the fights, um, you know, they know I love them and they always show up for me and i am always got their back too. Well, Michael, I really appreciate your time. I wish you the best of skill here in a few weeks. I'm looking forward to watching this fight and I'm looking forward to having you back on the program really soon, man. Come on, let's go right after the fight.